Okay. Okay, so any other questions about that? Comments? Okay, uh, the next topic we want to cover, uh, so-called multi-level security. We're going to skip a lot of this. We're only going to cover uh, kind of the main points here uh, because it leads into a couple other things we, I do want to cover. Uh, so this is uh, the idea, you know, if you see spy novels and that sort of stuff, you know, they, they always have information, right? It's top secret, top secret, secret, confidential, unclassified. Those are the four levels that they use uh, in the U.S. Department of Defense. Other countries, uh, you know, you do very similar things. They might call them slightly different things, but basically four levels is very common. And it's a, it's a hierarchy, right? So if someone has a secret clearance, what does that mean? I mean you can see secret stuff and everything below, but you can't see the top secret place. You can see <coughs> cl your classification, you know, what your clearance says, and below, but, but not above. Okay, so again, we have objects and subjects. So we have classifications and clearances. So documents get a classification, people get a clearance. Okay, we use the same terms for verbal clearances and classifications. Okay, just as I guess kind of an aside, you know, uh, the process, if you ever have to go through this in the US at least, uh, I'm sure it's somewhere elsewhere, to, to get a secret clearance is really not that big a deal. Uh, uh, I always like it when you see like academic people and they have a secret clearance and they think they're so special. So it's really not that big a deal. Uh, it's basically just a kind of a basic background check and a few other things. But a top secret clearance, that's pretty intense. You know, at the time I went through that, it was like 40 pages of paperwork you had to fill out, you know, excruciating detail. Everything you've done in the last 10 years, especially the embarrassing stuff you have to put in there. And then they come and they question you, and they question everybody you've known in the last 10 years, and they look for any discrepancy, and then they're all over them. Okay, so, and it can take a while. It took, I think my whole process took almost six months. Um, and that was not even close to a record, right? And that was, like, that was like average. There was another guy I went in, uh, the initial processing I went in, and he was there the very same day I started. Six months later, I was hired. He was hired two years later. <laughs> two years. Uh, I don't know why he didn't give up. Anyway, um, so another interesting thing to, to think about is, um, you know, once you get uh, a clearance like this, you work with these kind of documents, you're supposed to, when you create a document, you're supposed to put the classification <coughs> on it. So I always found that kind of interesting. Um, when I first started at NSA, you only had to put an overall classification for a document. That was nice, because then you'd make sure the first sentence was top secret, and you could put top secret on the whole thing and not have to worry about what you put in the rest of it. Uh, they didn't like that so much, because they have to declassify documents all the time, and when they do, then they have to figure out what part's really classified and what's not. So they changed the rules. They required that people classify each paragraph independently. So then I started writing documents with one long paragraph. <laughs> um, but if you have to classify each paragraph, so okay, so here's here's you know here's your typical government worker. Okay, so we would sit around sometimes and start and just think, just a thought experiment. We didn't actually do this. We would think, is it possible to write a document? where every paragraph taken individually is unclassified, but the overall <laughs> document is clearly top secret. Yes. If you try really hard, you could definitely do that. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, it's just some thoughts there. Okay, so we still have objects and subjects. Now, there are different levels in top secret, secret, confidential, unclassified, and there's a hierarchy, okay? Uh, okay, so what's the issue with multi-level security? The, the idea is this. You have users with different Clearances. So you have somebody with a top secret clearance, somebody with a secret clearance, maybe somebody with confidential clearance. And they're all using the same system. Okay? Now how do you prevent those people with, say, a confidential clearance from seeing secret and top secret stuff? Okay, so how do you control the flow of information? It's an access control problem. 
right? How do you restrict that access? Now, if everybody has the same clearance, everybody has top secret clearance, there's no problem. Okay, everybody can see everything. But it's when you have these different levels on the same system. Okay, so form of access control. Now, um, military governments all over the world, you know, have had to deal with this stuff for, for a long time. And in particular, the U.S. government's funded a lot of research into this, you know, how can they make these things more secure? Um, it's apparently done a lot of good, but they funded a lot of research into these things. So one reason for looking at this is that, you know, the strengths and weaknesses are kind of well understood because people have looked at it harder than a lot of other security problems. Now what about this? Are there possible uses for this outside of uh, the government and military? I mean, supposing you could set up different levels, right? And you could restrict the flow of information between those different levels. Could you use that? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, think about it. In business, there's lots of potential applications for this. Um, I have a friend who is a system administrator for some large company in the Valley. And he came up to me one time at a party. He said, oh, you're a security guy. You know, he said, gee, you know, this company I work for, when they first started, uh, it was started by some academic people. And they just had this philosophical view that everybody in the company should be able to see everything. I mean, the janitor could see all the top management stuff. They could see anything because it was just perfectly flat like that. He said it worked pretty well when the company was small. Then they started opening branch offices all around the world. Some employee would come in and work for a month, quit, and then their competitor would suddenly have a product very similar to theirs. Right? So, so, uh, so that wasn't so good. So he said what we need is something like this. You know, we need some system where we could have some documents and some information that only the top level management can see. And then some other documents, some other information that the top management and the rest of the management can see. And then some other documents that anybody in the company can see. And then some other documents that anybody can see inside or out of the company. I said, well, you ever heard of multi-level security? That's exactly what you described, right? Top secret, secret, confidential, unclassified. Okay. So, you know, if you could get this stuff to work uh, in a practical way, there would certainly be many um, applications for it. Uh, there's uh, some network firewall product I've seen uh, that claims to use multi-level security. Uh, it's more like a buzzword when they use it. <laughs> but what they're saying is that if somebody gets breaks in, gets through the firewall, they're, they, they try to keep them at effectively a low Clearance. In other words, they can't do too much damage if they get through. That's kind of the idea. Okay. So again, if you could get that to work, that, that would be fine. Uh, medical information and so on, all those sorts of things. Now, the catch here is that the multi-level security systems, all this security modeling and all this sort of stuff, tends to not be very practical. It tends to be kind of a theoretical exercise. And in fact, you know, if you worked in the government or in, you know, or in industry where they deal with classified information, you would quickly realize it's just sort of a, a, a bureaucratic thing. It's really kind of a legal structure more than anything. So that if you have signed this thing that you won't divulge classified information, and you do, they can put you in jail. And that's really what it comes down to. Okay. 